Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to share with you my story of how I became a farmer. My story is a convergence of three stories, really. My own path to farming, a dairy farm in Vermont, and a vegetable farm down the road where I grew up in New Hampshire. There's no record of farming in my family, so I have no idea when it was last a livelihood for my ancestors. But when I began working at Barker's Farm in Stratham, New Hampshire as a 14-year-old kid, what was supposed to just be a summer job turned into my life's work and passion, and farming came back into my lineage. That very first day at Barker's, I was picking strawberries, then lettuce, then radishes and peas. Something inside of me engaged, and a seed was planted. Over the next seven seasons, that seed took root and began to grow. And like a buckwheat cover crop, it pulled up to the, to the surface my life's purpose to farm and ultimately raise my family on the land. Gordon and Edie Barker were the owners and stewards of that farm, and we worked hard, so hard. We brought in so much food every day. On 20 acres, we grew tons of vegetables. Many crops at that point I had never heard of. Swiss chard, cilantro, beet greens, kohlrabi, and of course all the standard crops. Strawberries, tomatoes, corn, cukes, green beans, peppers, lettuce, carrots, and more. To me, everything that we did was real, really real. Our work and our actions had real meaning. And through Gordon's leadership, we pulled in large quantities of food from the earth, and the community came for it, and they needed it. And that, that moved me. And we did it all. We plowed, tilled, planted, weeded, mulched, harvested, washed, went to market, sold, planned. And it made sense. And we worried. When would it rain? Why are the potato beetles so intense? When, when we really need to weed the strawberries again? And we worked hard and learned real lessons. And Gordon taught me efficiency and demanded that from all of us. And I learned how to use my body and get strong. I really wanted to be on the corn hauling crew. No girl had ever been on the crew. Gordon said, you can be strong and tough, but you have to be able to hold a bin, one-armed, rip the corn with the other arm, all the while holding the bin as it's approaching 50 pounds, and then you got to do it fast and be able to dump the bin over the six-foot side of the truck and keep moving. Girls are shorter, have shorter arms. They just can't do it. But I needed to do it, and he inspired me to do it, and I earned a spot with the corn haulers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> One season of drought, it had been over seven weeks of no rain, and we had limited capacity to irrigate. We had haul pipes, but the ponds were drained as low as they could handle, and the crops were still thirsty. Gordon was worried. One afternoon, I went home, and it rained. I was so psyched, and I thought about Gordon's lighter mood he'd be in the next day. When I arrived to the farm the next morning, I greeted him with an excited, are you so happy it rained? He didn't say anything. He just waved me over to the field, knelt down, scraped with his hands across the soil of the surface. On a millimeter of, of moist soil, just bone dry dust. He said, we got just enough rain to beat back the dust. And that was my lesson in rainfall amounts. We had endless fun too. Practically daily, we made silly bets. Whoever hits that tree with a rotten tomato gets a cookie. I'll bet you a pizza you can't eat two whole habaneros, seeds and all. We play epic games of nighttime hide-and-seek in the backwoods. We played three-on-three -three basketball every morning after the harvest. The silliness was always there. No matter how worried, stressed, frustrated by the weather, the pests, the equipment, we always had time for fun. And it's a powerful thing as a 16-year-old to know what you want to do for the rest of your life. We all hope for that clarity, and we struggle to find it. I was shown it, and Gordon Barker showed me. And as a child, he had learned about the importance of hard work and the work his parents did, and, uh, and he did alongside them. And as a teenager, I watched Gordon provide food for, to his community, and it taught me that food could be the connector and that a farm was a place for that connection. But I wasn't a farmer. I didn't come from a farm. That wasn't really an option for me. We didn't have land. My family didn't know farming. I was going to college. Through college, the question bounced around in my mind constantly. How would I ever farm for myself? After I graduated, I left for California. I decided to delay trying to answer that question. I wanted to pursue a career more acceptable to my family, allowing me to live somewhere else, save a little money. I pursued a career in education, teaching and developing curriculum. The years flew, up, flew by, and as I realized 
Teaching was another deep passion of mine. Seven years passed, and despite the happiness I received from teaching, the ache to get back to farming was building. In 2004, I realized I had to take the leap and figure out how to farm. I visited the UC Santa Cruz farm and to see if a farmer training program would be a good way for me to enter farming. The first person on my, I met on my visit, a current apprentice named Adam Wilson, would be my future business partner. I was instantly moved by the thought of spending six months surrounded by a group of focused, like-minded, passionate farmers. And those six, next six months really transformed me. Although working for Gordon and Edie introduced me to farming, as a young kid, I was less aware of the greater farming movement that was brewing. My exposure to, at Barker's helped me to, to develop a personal connection to the work and the people. But at Santa Cruz, I became aware of the movement. I learned about CSA models, creative financing models. I learned that hordes of young, career-changing, entrepreneurial-spirited people were turning to farming and were stepping out of the safe career paths they were on to figure out how to redirect the steamrolling industrial chemical trajectory that our nation and world was on. And I was inspired. Immediately after I graduated from the program, a job opened up at Michigan State to co-manage the 10-acre farm and to develop curriculum for their new farmer training program. The job perfectly combined my teaching and farming passions, and before I knew it, I was moving to Michigan, only ever having been there for my interview. This was a, there was a lot of serendipity in my life at this time, and just like meeting my future business partner on my first visit to Santa Cruz, I met my future life partner three days after moving to Michigan. Chris was not a farmer, but a community builder and a musician. He uses music to connect people. The way I see food as the universal connector, he sees music in that same way. Now, I made it pretty clear to Chris that my life path was already carved out at this point, and I was just following the ride at this point. I told him that I was in Michigan now, but when it came time for me to farm on my own, it would have to be back in Vermont. And he said, I heard Vermont's nice. And at the end of my talk, Chris is going to come on out and share a, one of his farm songs with, for, with me. So after the birth of our son, Henry, we the pull to farm ourselves and to raise him on our own farm became really strong. And the pull to come back to where my family was was undeniable. Adam was also already in Vermont farming on leased land. And we agreed that if Chris and I could figure out how to move east, we'd start seriously writing a business plan and figure out how to buy land. I lined up a job, and Chris, Henry, and I planned our move. Right before we arrived in Vermont, friends alerted us to a farm, the Leduc Farm, six miles south of downtown Burlington that was up for sale, and the Vermont Land Trust was accepting applications and offers to purchase the farm. With no children to pass the farm on to, the Leducs were faced with a tough question and, and decisions about what to do with their greatest asset, 150 acres of land right here in Chittenden County. Unlike my family, the Ladukes only knew farming. For as far back as they had record, they farmed, and they had farmed this land in particular for over 200 years. Morris and his siblings began to explore their options, and they had many. There were developers chomping at the bit for their prime land and to continue the march of housing developments and condos along the Dorset Street in South Burlington and Shelburne. But several neighbors approached the Ladukes and informed them of the Vermont Land Trust and the option to conserve. The process would take a while, and there'd be a lot of legal back and forth and paperwork, but their interest was piqued. The Ladukes decided to conserve. The land trust took, took, then took on raising the funds to purchase the development rights um, from the Ladukes, and then the new farmers would have the opportunity to buy the farm at ag value. So when you don't grow up as a farmer on family land, even when you've dreamt of it pretty much your whole adult life, it never seems like you could possibly be ready to farm. The price of land for new farmers is an enormous hurdle, and in this case, that, that hurdle seemed negotiable because of the conservation. This was our chance, albeit years sooner than we had anticipated, but we had to go for it. The only catch was that we had less than a month to submit our proposal. We hit the ground running, pooled our resources, submitted our vision and our farm, and a, along with a business plan, and we made the deadline. Ten days later, on August 19th, 2009, we received a phone call telling us that we had been chosen to steward and buy the Leduc farm. <laughs> on that same exact day, I received another call telling me that Gordon Barker had unexpectedly passed. The person I was most excited to tell was gone. 
Um, the circle of life, the cycle of life, and the cyclical nature of nature was thrust upon me that day. We hadn't even planted one seed. I was rocked to my core and shaken and saddened. And in case I wasn't inspired enough to succeed, Gordon had just handed me every piece of motivation I would ever need. He was a man who taught me how to farm and modeled for me that life as a farmer is not only honorable, but deeply fulfilling. And so now, three years later, I'm more humbled, more engaged, and more inspired. And with the birth of our daughter, Sam, a year ago, and with our son, Henry, coming into consciousness on our farm, our kids only know the farming life, like Gordon. And Gordon lessons are ever-present in my day-to-day life. My employees know the Gordon stories. What's the fastest way to set up the irrigation system? How will I coax my heavy soils to grow marketable veggies? How do I unload a a tractor trailer full of a hoop house with a bunch of volunteers? (laughs) And of course, how do we pause to enjoy what we're doing? I know more, more than ever now why I or anyone would want to farm. My, my farm is different from Barker's. We milk cows, raise beef, animals, and pigs. We grow veggies all winter. We have a bakery. But the purpose is the same, and the lifestyle is the same, and farming is in my blood now. So in the evening, when I stroll through my gardens as the sun is setting with my daughter in my arms, and the warm light shines on her cheeks, and I can reach down and pluck a spinach, a leaf of spinach, and eat it with her, And when my son Henry proudly tells me that he can do all the jobs on our farm, as he helps me bed the cows in the barn, and when my muscles ache slightly as I lay down to bed at night, I'm so proud to be a farmer. You see, sir. 
seeds give birth to be, and what we grow is who we are. It is sacred, it is sweet. And greed, greed is the destroyer, it takes vision from our eyes, and the land beneath our feet. And the land in which we stand is the only thing we have that can withstand the weight of our lives. So learn to treat the land like to treat your own two hands on a restraint. Cherish the gifts you hold. If it all comes crashing down Well, I don't have the strength to save this town And if we're all just meant to blow away Please know that I tried my best to stay Please know that I tried my best to stay. Please know that I tried my best to stay.